welcome to Bay Focus. What a privilege again, and I say this each week to come into your home to share what's happening here throughout Tampa Bay and all the ministries. And periodically we do sh some shows that I like to say are just literally out of the box. And that is they are totally different types of ministries. And this is going to be a fun program today because a lot of it's oriented to entertainment and comedy. And I, you probably are familiar with the name Shonda Pierce. Well, she was here in, at Countryside Christian Center recently uh, on her tour. It's a girl thing and we sent Brooke Larson from CTN to cover that, and she's going to show you in, um, that in just a moment and sat down and talked with Shonda. And we also have Lowell Tausick back with Razzmatazz Entertainment, and he does a variety of things. He's an illusionist, uh, you name it, um, all kinds of things that he does, including puppetry, his ventriloquism. He's going to be here and show some of that, but he has a heart for the gospel and reaching people. But let's start with Brooke Larson today and Shonda Pierce, It's a Girl Thing. Comedian Shonda Pierce recently was at Countryside Christian Center for It's a Girl Thing tour. Shonda is well known for her southern charm and razor sharp wit. She's been entertaining audiences from coast to coast for over a decade. Fans packed into the center expecting to have a night of laughs and that's just what they got. Well, they call on your home line dating thing. I got a wink. And the guy sent me his picture and I wrote back, go, how old are you? And he said, 30. I said, I have drawers that are older than me. No, I didn't say that because that would open the door for a lot of conversation. I also had the opportunity to chat with Shonda before she hit the stage. I'm here with top-selling female comedian Shonda Pierce. Shonda, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you, sweetheart. This is fun. Did you know that you would just be, at a young age, impacting so many people in the realm of laughter? No, I didn't because for, for a while I got spanked for everything I was trying to do. I didn't think I was impacting anybody, right, right. but I, I always, you know, looking back, you know, when you start trying to, as all of a sudden now it's been almost 25 years of my career, and, and you start looking back at what, what really did start all this, and I do remember as a young child being one of those that, that made mother laugh, okay. you know, especially when she's getting ready to spank you. If you'd make her laugh, she'd just forget what she got mad about and walk off, you know, and so laughter has always been a mechanism for me. It's been, a, you know, a salvation. It's been a get out of, you know, work. It's been a, you know, help mama forget that she was going to spank me. Right, right. It, you know, it was, it was used in a variety of ways. Never did I dream or understand the impact that it could make um, on a human being until I was old enough to truly need it as well. And so when the Bible talks about laughter doing good, good like a medicine, it was for me first. It was medicine I needed um, before anybody else. You know, before you could dish it out, you, you really got to know that, that, that this works. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's not an act. It's not a, a game. It's a, now I work really hard at my craft and I write and I try to come up with the next funny thing. But the, but the true, uh, you know, or the true laughter that I, that I pour out <laughs> It's really there. I get as I get as tickled about me as anybody. <laughs> You're Which yourself. I don't know if that's smart or not, but I crack myself <laughs> up. <laughs> Recently had what would have been your thirty second anniversary with yes. your husband. Yeah. Um and it's my first anniversary without him. Yeah, how has that been? Oh, you know, it was um it was rough. You know, every time you hit a monumental moment, uh, it's the year of first for me. This is my first year. I lost my husband. Uh, he passed away in July. And uh, last year, and so it was the first Christmas without him. It was the first Fourth of July, you know, it was coming up, and that was a big family day for us. So I know I'm going to dread that, you know. And so it's the year of first for anyone walking through grief. And I am not, uh, I am well acquainted with grief. I lost both my sisters and my mother, and and so the, I understand what the first year of grief is. What you just have to go through. No one can walk through it with you. No one can do it for you. It's just something you have to do on your own. And yet you're not alone. The Lord is so faithful and good. And he sends people and, and at the right time. Just when you think you're going to break, the body of Christ shows up to be who they are. You know, and, and so that's precious. But it is hard. It's hard. It, it is unlike any grief I've ever experienced in my life, the loss of a, of a spouse. We, our relationship didn't implode and we, and we gave up on it. Our, our relationship just all of a sudden is gone, 
and that is just hard. Right. How do you get back on that stage and still perform the way you're supposed to perform? I take all the tools that I know as a performer, I take the stories that I know that always works, I talk about Spanx because women will always crack up at that, and you do what you know works. The hard part is some days I'm at great benefit for that because I'm laughing just as much as anybody. Some days it's a little harder for me to laugh, so I'm just a performer. And, and, but there's not many of those days. The, the joy of the Lord is so incredible, and the, and the sound of laughing. You know, it's the same reason we watch those videos of a baby laughing. You've seen those on yes. YouTube. I could just watch all day, one after that, <laughs> and you just start laughing. It's contagious. And so I am, I am so blessed that I happen to make a living. You know, I used to say when my husband first died and I had to go back to work, yeah. I said, man, this is when I wish I was a plumber. Because, <laughs> you know, you just could, you didn't, you could get under a sink and you don't have to work, you know, laugh, make no any, one. exactly. But I, I look at it now and go, wait a minute, I am so blessed that this is a job that I have to go make a bunch of people laugh. And so when you're in the business of lifting them up, you can't help but be lifted up yourself. Your Facebook fans just love you. <laughs> I know. I don't ever have to defend myself, honey. No, you, All I have to go is go, Joe hurt my feelings. Right. Boom. They, <laughs> and they Turn love, them loose. They love the fact that you post, you know, everything. Everything, everything that's going on, ups and downs. I do. And, and so recently, not too long ago, you posted um, where you had uh, uploaded your dating profile. Yeah. We just want to know, how's that going? <laughs> Terrible. You know, it's really started out as nothing but a joke. I had girlfriends over for sleepover, you know, old right. high school friends, and you think you're 12 so you can stay up all night. Right. Well, I fell asleep first one. I wake up the next morning, my laptop is open to three different dating sites, and they had signed me up to all this stuff. One, it will be great material someday. <laughs> I wish, I think, I think the best comedy show would be just to be stand up there and show one picture after another. I, the pictures that men put of themselves thinking, this is really going to get it for some woman. I'm like, are you kidding me? So it'll be great material someday. You know, I don't know. I once in a while will get an email that says, are you the, are you Shonda Pierce? You know, what are you doing on this website? And I'm like, I guess the same thing you are, right. you know, and I'm, and I'm discovering some websites are notorious to be up to no good than right. others. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it started out as a joke. I think, I, I think I've gotten myself off of all of them, but they know how tightwad I am. If they paid money, I will go to the end of the month because I'm not going to waste that money, but I'm collecting the material. <laughs> It's been a refreshing evening of Christian comedy here in Clearwater. A number of people came out to enjoy the heartwarming yet comical side of Shonda Pierce. For details on her next tour, go to Shonda.org. Reporting for Bay Focus, I'm Brooke Larson. Thank you, Brooke. What a great opportunity to interview Shonda Pierce and an incredible woman of God she is and just privileged to be able to, to highlight her coming to our area. Well, we have another kind of entertainment theme and really, this really is. I mean, Shonda's a funny lady and yet gets the gospel out too. And, and uh, we have Lowell Tausick with us here on set today and his um, organization is called Razzmatazz Entertainment that is founded and, and staffed by Lowell. <laughs> uh -huh. yep. Lowell and friends. Yes. Lowell yeah. and friends. Yeah. Lowell, it's great having you back. Well, thank you very much, darling. I'm so glad to be here. So great having you. You are like the consummate entertainer. You do it all. You're a juggler. You're a ventriloquist. You're a teacher. You, you do missions work. I'm, I mean, this is tremendous. And I, I want our views. It's been a number of years since we've had you on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ran into you recently at church. You're very, you're very active as well. I want to give a plug to some of the churches uh, that we featured today. And the show Countryside Christian Center was one of them. And then uh, Calvary Church mm -hmm. in Clearwater as well, yes. uh, where you are very active as well. So um, you do have a home base, but you go everywhere with Razzmatazz Entertainment. Please tell our viewers what that is. Sure. Just to give you an idea, um, when we started with Razzmatazz Entertainment, we had no idea it would be what it is today. Originally, the first mission we were with, International Teams, they had um, a Bible school for eight months that we were at, and ventriloquism was an elective. So I thought, well, I'll try it. And at the time, I was 27. It's not like I've been doing this since I was eight years old, because yeah. uh, I was immensely shy. And so I took the ventriloquism class as an elective. 
Then we went to England. We were there for two years working with international teams. And as time unfolded, then we joined on with Gospel Missionary Union, which is called Avant Ministries now. And then we were there, we were with Avant for 10 years in England. And what we did there was helping the uh, local church reach out to their neighbors. One of the things I did was I taught the Bible in public schools using the ventriloquism magic and juggling. So that's how it started. So it was with teaching the Bible in the public schools. Then when we were looking at coming back to the U.S., um, we were thinking, well, what should I do for work? And so my wife mentioned about maybe doing things like for birthdays with the ventriloquism and illusions. So what we did was we started letting Christian schools know, because I could do the chapels, and started doing birthdays. And from there, it's built up. So now I do like corporate events, uh, do shows for public schools, like on good character traits, um, bullying. And I do shows for really retirement communities and a number of church events, Upwards, Awana programs. So it's really unfolded wow. more than to what I've ever thought it would oh, be. Oh my goodness, to start from the whole missions mm -hmm. angle, which you still still are involved in. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Sure. But before we get there, yes. I want people to be able to see everything you do. And you you go into all these different places that you just mentioned to do, to do what you do. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you always weave in gospel themes into that, or do you do, do some things for secular? Like, like how do you how do you do the two Good different question. Yes. angles? What we do is when I when I present a show, what I'll do is a church will use it as an outreach. So what I'll do is I'll do 20 minutes, let's say purely entertainment, and then the second 20 minutes is generally a gospel presentation. Okay. And, um, okay. and so that works out really well. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah. So all right. And now, if there were to be some businesses that can't necessarily do the um, the Christian side of things or whatever out there, you could still come on and, and you would have some just positive themes or you know how do you yes. do that? Yeah. Um, well, actually, what like when I've entertained for corporate events yeah. or retirement communities, it's purely entertainment. Okay. And really, what I think a lot of let's say non-Christian events yeah. um, appreciate is that the humor is clean. Yeah. You know, they can yeah. actually listen to an hour of entertainment and not hear anything you know, that's right. not preferable to hear. Right, right. Okay. I want to give our viewers a little bit of a sample. And you have yes. put together, and actually we were talking before we did the show. Very cool. Your son actually put this video together. And what I love is it's in slow motion because right. we can actually see mm -hmm. what's happening in some of this. So let's take a look a little bit of the, I, I, you know, I hesitate to use the word magic, but, it, but the illusions mm -hmm. and everything that you do uh, with Razzmatazz Entertainment. Let's take a look. Okay, this is Vegas bound. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, uh -huh. that's terrific. Wow, Thank you. you are so incredibly talented. And, and I want you at home to stay tuned because Lowell, in just a few moments, is going to do some things on set for us as well, too, to show some of his abilities. But I want to go to the ministry side, too, of what you yeah. do because so much of what you do, too, is still missions. You go into Thailand, Thailand in a big way. Tell us what you're, what you're doing there, and we're going to look at pictures in a moment. Sure, sure. <clears throat> um, my wife and I, we had worked with missions um, when our children were younger. We came back to the U.S. in 99, and we had a desire to get back involved with missions. So we were, over the years, we've been looking at various ministries to get involved with. And we came across the BSC, which is the English school in Bangkok, the Baptist Student Center. And so my wife and I thought, well, let's go there. So we went there. And my wife found her niche for ministry of working with those coming out of the sex trade and mm -hmm. teaching them how to find other work. And Which is for, a huge issue in Thailand. Yes, yeah. yeah. 
And for myself, I enjoy doing um, teaching and evangelism. And so we really see how the Lord has opened up that opportunity. So we've been to Bangkok a few times, and we'd like to see about going back again. Okay, well, you, you are you have brought along some pictures, mm -hmm. and let's go ahead and show those because it details some of the work in Thailand, and you, and you tell for us uh, what we're seeing. Sure. As we, go ahead. There we are. Okay, when you were asking about the how we use the ministry and how we do the shows, but this was a ministry outreach of the church there. We're at the BSC, the Baptist Student Center, where they were doing the show, and then it was a missionary, you know, a missions pre a gospel presentation. This is one of the centers where my wife spoke at. This was a class where I taught how to do the illusioning ventriloquism and presenting the gospel, and people traveled in each morning for that. This was at an outreach at a juvenile center where I was presenting the gospel in Bangkok. And, um, and again, this is at the class when I was teaching them how to do the illusion and the ventriloquism and presenting the gospel. And again, this is another juvenile center where I was at. And the gentleman who was doing the translating for me, since I don't know Thai, the language of Thailand, um, it was a huge help having the translator. And again, that's my wife teaching at another center. And the gentleman who was also translating for me also runs the House of Blessing, which was the ministry we worked with in the prison work there. And one of the things you can do in Bangkok, the, one of the greatest felt needs they have there is to learn English. So teaching English um, is an important ministry there. So that's Carlene teaching English, which she was quite proficient at. And this again is a, another aspect of the class where I was teaching how to do the ventriloquism and illusions. They were very keen to learn. I really oh, appreciated yeah, I their spirit. Oh yeah, I see where that would be appealing. Yes. Those are, those are great. You're just passing you. on some of the things you've learned and um, on to others in the work of Thailand sharing the gospel. Um, if we have time, we'll talk a little more about, about that too, because the, the one thing um, I think a lot of people are interested in too is because of the, the human trafficking side and, the, and the, the sex slavery that goes on, are you, having, are you making a difference there? Is your wife able to work um, and, and really change some lives there? That's hard mm -hmm. to, to get people out of that and get placed. And yeah, well, to give you an idea, one of the things that came up in one of the classes she taught, because what she does is it's good when they make a choice to come out of the, that work. Yeah. But then you have to train them to do something else. Yeah. And it's like, well, what do I do? This is all I've done. Yeah. And one of the things that Carlene does is in her class, it helps them realize, okay, what else do I like to do? And she was teaching one of the classes, and one of the ladies was talking. She says, oh, I like to clean. And Carly says, not a lot of people do. Yeah. So she said, why don't you do this? If you work at a hotel, see how you get the cleaning done quickly, what products they use. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is then maybe if you have a friend who can help you, start contacting people of places that you can clean for them. Mm -hmm. And so then the lady started oh, yeah. getting a thought of, okay, this is something else a, I can this do. This could be a business. Yes, she which start. actually entrepreneurship in yeah. Bangkok is is pretty prevalent. Oh, that's that's yes. that's awesome to see yeah. how God's using you guys with that. All right, now I promised our viewers mm -hmm. we are going to switch gears. You saw a little bit on video, but we want you to entertain us. But Lowell, I, you're going to juggle first. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to step off in, in just a second here. But um, the the rings that you're using s signify something called the wordless book. Yes. And you need to tell our viewers what that is Great. first. The wordless book was actually originally with Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon mm -hmm. out of England. And he was presenting the gospel at an orphanage. And what he did was he came up with three colors, a dark color, the red color, and a clean color that explains how we can be forgiven by all that the Lord Jesus has done based on Psalms where he says, wash me, I'll be whiter than snow. Then after that, um, other colors have been added. For example, Moody added the color gold for heaven. Mm -hmm. So Hudson Taylor used it as well. So the wordless book I have found to be one of the most efficient tools in presenting the gospel. Yes. And what I like about it is when I go through the rings, I use the rings first. I also have a set of juggling balls mm -hmm. the same color. And what I do is after I juggle the rings, I do a skit with Joey, and he gets the colors wrong. Oh, okay. okay? And then I say to, the, if I'm doing it for kids, I say, now what was the next color? And they all call out the next color. And I say, mm -hmm. now what was that for? And they all say. So then when I review the colors at the end with the, the four colored balls, the children are telling me, as I say, now what's the first color? They tell me it's a dark color. And what's mm -hmm. that for? It's for sin. What's the next color? Red. Who's that for? Jesus. Mm -hmm. What's the third color? 
so they know how to present the gospel. And to be able to do that with children, oh, that's that when huge. they talk with their friends, they can do that. That's very I remember years ago we featured the wordless book here on, on Bay Focus and, and people actually assembling yes. some of the little booklets and yes. a whole church was involved in this. Uh, awesome ministry. All right, I am going to go get your rings. I'm going to move okay. off set. You're going to do some juggling yes. first. Yes. And then we'll come back. Okay. Go ahead, go right here. I'm going yep. to step out. You go okay. ahead and do it. Well, what I'm going to do is the first color I'm going to use is going to be the dark color. And the reason why it's the dark color is because that with the dark color, it's a picture of sin. And the Bible says that sin is anything that we say bad, do bad, or think bad against God. And what I would say as well is that the Bible says when we walk in sin, we walk in darkness. So the first color is a dark color. So the dark color, as I was saying, is a picture of sin. And it's that sin that separates us from God. But then the Bible goes on to say how the Lord Jesus died on the cross and came alive again from the dead on the third day. And the reason why he did that was so when we believe in him, we can be forgiven of the things we've done wrong. Then the Bible goes on to say, when we come to believe in the Lord Jesus, how God cleans our heart. And this clean color is a picture of how God cleans our heart when we come to believe in him. Then the Bible says the streets in heaven are covered with gold. And when God cleans our heart and we've been forgiven, then we can be with God forever in heaven. And when I think of these four colors, it reminds me of all that God has done so we can have a friendship with God, we can be forgiven and be with God forever in heaven. That is awesome. Thank I you. love it. I Thank love you. it. This is incredible. All right, we have about five minutes left, and we want to talk with Joey. Sure. So bring Joey on. This is the ventriloquism <laughs> side of what you do. And... Well, hello, Joey. Oh, hello. How are you? Very good, Miss Darling. Nice to uh, see good. you. Good. It's good. I haven't seen yes. you in some years I know. here. You used I to know. be on the show years ago. Yes, yes. You don't Thank look you. any different. I know. I know. Now, Lowell, not so much. Yeah. Or, or me. No, I feel bad for him, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His hair is getting a little thin. Joey, <laughs> can, can we stick to what we're talking about? Yes. Well, it's nice to see you, Miss Darling. Nice Thank to you see you, too, us. Joey. Now, mm -hmm. now, Joey, how are you involved in the ministry? What do you like doing with Razzmatazz? Well, I do all the important things. Actually, what's interesting is people will remember more of what Joey says. Yeah. So when I teach the Bible, Joey says the main important things. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so because see, actually, I, I, I do word studies in Greek, and I know all those things. See, he failed Greek twice. Joey, can, can <laughs> we stick to what we're talking about? Sure, sure. <laughs> and um, so really with Joey, um, it, when because you know, we listen to people talk all the time, so when it comes from Joey, you know, they tend yeah. to remember more of what he says. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. now how long has, has, now Joey, you look extremely young, but how long <laughs> have you been, actually had Joey, working with Joey? Sure. Well, when I learned to do ventriloquism, um, Joey was the first um, ventriloquist figure I purchased, so that would have been back in 87. So I've had him oh, for wow. over 25 years. Wow. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. now how do you, how do you vary it, you know, and, and, Give us a sample, like if you, obviously Joey's going to work with children, but when you go work with like in a retirement yes. center or corporate, what it, mm -hmm. what it, give me a little bit of your, well, your well, presentation. Well, well, the thing that's interesting, you know, ventriloquism, like what I'm doing now is yeah. I do the talking for Joey. No, you don't. <laughs> Joey, I'm explaining. No, you see, actually, Miss Darlene, I do the talking for Mr. Lowell and I do the talking for myself. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Excuse me. No, you don't. Yes, I do. See, this is actually a very extensive illusion, you see. <laughs> Yes, no, Joey, but no, she's explaining, she wants me to explain how I do the ventriloquism. Well, you're not, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. No, you're not, yes, I am. No, we'll have to talk about this later. Okay. But you know, I can do ventriloquism. You think so? Yes. And how is that? Well, I can recite a nursery rhyme title without moving my lips. Which one? I don't want to tell you because I'm going to do it from this darling. Well, you have to okay. let me know what I it is. I want to hear it. I can't tell you what because then you're going to say it. You want to say the title of a nursery rhyme without moving your lips. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, here you go. <clears throat> I've been practicing this. Miss Mary Mac. <laughs> well, that's very good now, but you're going to do ventriloquism. Oh, yeah, did I move my lips? Yes, oh, you got to get practiced on that. <laughs> I'll try this again. <clears throat> Miss Mary Mac. <laughs> How was that? Well, that was very good. <laughs> Why don't you try it? No, I, I think <laughs> you did a much better job than what I could do. Why, well, thank you. Yes, so that gives you a little idea of... Um, yeah. What I'm trying to do with this guy. He's learning, though. He's yeah. learning. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Okay, so do you, so Lowell and Joey, do you have specific 
things when you go to different locations and do different things you have different like a little different act each yes. time. Yes, yeah, and actually I've been back to some places like six times and I do a different show oh, each time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how yeah. do you, when, when you are literally trying to come up with ideas for this, I mean, is this something you are always reinventing, always changing, always altering, always trying to think of a new? Oh yeah, because generally what I'll do is I'll put together a new one hour show each year. Yeah. And I generally start working on that in the fall and so what I'll do is I start looking for new illusions to learn, uh, mm -hmm. writing, thinking of new ventriloquism skits to write. And the thing that's nice with ventriloquism is you can practice when you're driving down the road. Yeah, you know? oh yeah. He'll practice in the restaurant when <laughs> folks think he's crazy. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. Seriously, uh -huh. you literally have Joey with you down the road. You cannot no, no, possibly no. have Joey with no, you. No, no, I, I sit in the back seat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and so, so what I'll do is like I'll just practice as we're, okay. as we're going down. I like the idea better of having Joey right next to you at a stoplight with people pulling up to the side. We're going to have to end on that sure. note. And, okay. and thank you so much, Lowell, for coming on and, well, thank and sharing. thank you for having us. And thank we're going to um, be right back with you and just hold steady with us. Sure. We want to show our viewers how they can reach you okay. with Razzmatazz Entertainment. We'll be right back with more Bay Focus. Thank you. To contact Lowell Tozik and Razzmatazz Entertainment Company, please call 813-814-1994 or send an email to info at razent.com. You can also connect with Lowell online at razent.com or find Razzmatazz Entertainment on Facebook. Bay Focus puts the spotlight on Tampa Bay. Join host Darlene Greenlee as she takes a look at the people and events reaching our Central Florida communities with the gospel. Plan to watch Bay Focus Wednesday mornings at 11.30 and Thursday nights at 7 right here on your CTN station. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Thank you so much to Brooke Larson once again for being out in the field in the Tampa Bay area, bringing things to us like, like the Shonda Pierce event and concerts that we feature. She's a great lady too. And then also Lowell Talzik with Razzmatazz Entertainment. Little different show today, uh, showing you how God can use comedy, entertainment, everything, illusions, magic, you name it, um, for his glory to spread the gospel. Tune in next week from Bay Focus. We'll see you then. I'm going to keep talking to Joey and Lowell, okay? Bye-bye. Good to have you.